All right, gang, welcome back. It's the big board we're looking at, Hanu. It's the, uh, I guess, uh, <clears throat> World of War or SNT magazine, whatever it's called, number 80 or something like that. I don't have the magazine here, so I can't tell you what number it is. I, I don't know what number it is. Doesn't really matter. New release, Decision Games, Joe Yaust. It's Goss for uh, a learning exercise, not Goss Light would be what I, I would characterize this as. And as I'm getting into it, we're now finishing up uh, the, the second turn for the Germans here. And then we're going to go on to the second, the second turn for the, for the French. Uh, so it's been interesting. Uh, there's some <clears throat> interesting limits that are placed on units and formations and activities and things like that, which, you know, you know, you, we can sit here and argue all day. Should every German unit be able to do a prepared assault or should only half of them or four of them or whatever the case may be really kind of neither here nor there concentrated effort, concentrated application of forces is going to blow away anything that the, the uh, French are able to sort of present generally speaking, except when you uh, miscalculate what you are bringing to the fight, uh, then you can get yourself in trouble like I did here uh, with that particular unit. <clears throat> he had to retreat uh, from his attack. Now, uh, so going through combat, I really just want to talk about combat here more than anything else. And I think I think the the most difficult thing about combat is not the actual calculation of uh, or the procedure per se, but it's the uh, it's the results application that can get a little overwrought or a little involved if you don't pay attention to what the results say. So let's just and we'll, we'll kind of I'd actually kind of potentially like to leave that for a second conversation. I thought I'd just walk you through how a combat can work, what types of combat there are, and then sort of talk through some of those things and and see what flavor comes out of that i i don't know let's let's just have a little ramble about this for now and we'll see what happens so <clears throat> the sequence of play runs in a, you know pretty standard for most games you do your command and supply and all that sort of stuff up front and you determine the status of your hqs and all the sort of goodness and the germans get to uh uh, do their movement basically and, and as part of that they can before they move they can determine who and where and which units are going to participate in either prepared assaults or tactical assaults uh, they can also place exploit markers uh, two per side uh, so that you can you know and it's per hex i believe so not per unit. I, I think so that means all the units in a specific hex will get a one of two exploit markers, which seems kind of stingy, but that is what it is. You can also uh, build uh, improved positions. So once you get through that exercise, uh, it's then going to be the active player's combat. And so the Germans are the active player and they're gonna have, uh, you know, they're gonna have maybe a tactical assault here and they're going to have a prepared assault, I don't know, here as the case may be. And you can put more, so there's four, ground assaults which is what these are there are ground assaults which are a which can come in two forms prepared or tactical and to me well um, that's a whole nother conversation i don't want to get down the semantics route but uh <clears throat> so i can do four ground assaults in a given uh turn am or pm turn and then of those, they can be any type, right? So uh, that sort of limits you. But what you can do is put more down. I put quite a few down because I really wasn't sure who I wanted to, who wanted to, uh, who I wanted to attack, or whatever the case may be. So, for instance, if this guy hadn't moved yet, I could put uh, prepared assault on him, right? And he could then move and do his prepared assault. Now there are rules for how far you can move in a prepared assault. It uh, might be one hex or two hexes. Tactical assaults, I believe, uh, now I don't recall how far. 
they can move something. Uh, but uh, that, how much it is doesn't matter. We want to talk about the concepts. So you have this idea that there are a finite number of grand assaults you can execute, and you can execute either prepared assaults or tactical assaults. And so as you go through this exercise and you start working out, well, who do I want to, who do I want to attack first? And what type of attack do I want to do first? You're going to look at the board. Uh, you may go through your barraging first, right? So the attacker is going to use his, I believe he's going to, he's going to do, hang on one sec. Right, as I was saying, uh, you'll go through this exercise of uh, allocating your air, and then you'll allocate, the enemy will allocate their artillery, and then you will allocate your artillery and resolve all of those. And that may end up, changing the landscape of the map fairly significantly so for instance you might uh if we were attacking this unit one two three and i was providing combat uh <clears throat> combat reserves to this unit i might want to if this guy was adjacent so he's got a good spotting uh i might want to uh, use artillery to pop him out of reserve if i can do that with these guys uh although in fact being adjacent to him would probably pop him out of reserve anyway. But nevertheless, you could barrage these guys and pop them out of reserve. Uh, I could, uh, <clears throat> as the defender, attack these guys with my artillery, and that would put a, a negative shift on the on the combat results table uh, against these guys if they had an artillery shift. They can have up to two artillery shifts, in fact. So there's, there's a lot of interplay that goes on even before you get to the uh, odds calculations, and there's some choices you're going to need to make about how you allocate finite resources for air and uh, artillery against the particular combat chits that you've seen arrayed on the on the on the map so which is one of the reasons why i put so many down is because i wanted to keep the french guessing as to where those attacks might occur and then depending on where they where they did use their artillery that would then potentially change my plan right so there's a little bit of uh, gamesmanship going on there when you're playing a pose that can be i guess could be pretty interesting exercise between the two players all right so once all that artillery stuff's out of the way, that then now we're going to get down to the, the, the raw combat uh, constructs. And so then we're going to look at, say, a prepared assault. So we're going to tally up the odds straight up. I'm going to look at my combat factors, uh, which are the first number. On the left there, the six. And these guys are going to use their four for their defensive number. <clears throat> and we'll tally up those get an initial odds ratio, and we're going to look at a ground, the ground assault table, which I took a photograph of and printed because it's all the way down the other end of the, the map, and I've got it stretched out. I'm looking at the map long ways. So we're going to get an odds ratio based on a certain line that we're, we're on, which is going to be terrain-based. Line one is open, and so if I've got a four-to-one attack, I'll be using this column here uh, to... The attacker will roll the dice and they will get a percentile result. And that will be the, the result over here, excuse me, the result over here that is applied to the defendant. But before we get to that, we're, we're going to have to do some column shifting. And so uh, artillery uh, shifts are going to apply. I think it's called, are they called artillery shifts? <laughs> Yeah, artillery shifts. Prepared assaults are going to give us a benefit. Uh, artillery shifts will give either a benefit or a malice, depending on who's who has one. And then uh, there are some other, you know, multiple divisions will cause a problem uh, if there's a, uh, a overstacking, things like that, right? So you get those odds, get a final uh, column, and that ground assault value, uh, it was really just your odds. On, on a particular column. So it's going to be column. In this case, if we were looking at a four to one and we went up one, it would go from column L to column M. And then <clears throat> now we would start looking at all the DRMs. Well, what DRMs are there? Well, it's only, I think, four that uh, uh, matter. And there's really only one that's going to be super significant. So in this particular instance here, let's just zoom in a little bit, right here. If I, in fact, had, uh, let's just move these guys up one hex and I'll try and remember to put them back here. Uh, if I had 
armor in this as well and it was prepared assault i can one of the benefits of prepared assaults is that i can use multiple hexes to attack one hex so i tally up all the combat factors get my odds and then i look at the proficiency ratings here's the defensive pro proficiency rating and here's the offensive pro proficiency rating that's a little tricky to say isn't it uh <clears throat> so i pick the best one for each stack so i look in here and get you know either a seven or an eight and here I get either a seven or an eight, depending on you know who's leading off. And whatever the delta is between the two, I'm going to get five DRM points per delta per difference. So it's fairly modest. So it's five percent, five percentile points plus or minus to the person who has the highest number, right? Uh, the same would go for the combat reserve bonus. So I've got combat reserves and I can have up to three of these. If there were three within range of this guy, I've got to be within three hexes, I would get five percentile points per each one of those. So that five, 10, 15 potentially I could add to this guy's DRM. All right. Well, to the, the, the net DRM. <clears throat> and then there's a regimental integrity bonus. And basically that means if the Germans have got dudes stacked together appropriately, uh, either two battalions or a, um, a, uh, a battalion and a, and a tank company or a couple, I think it's a couple of companies can also be counted as one as well. I'm just trying to skim the rule here. I can't see it without moving things and bumping things. So just to trust me that there's a regimental integrity bonus and uh, you can get multiple of those uh, based on the number of regimental units. I'll call it units, but maybe it's structures or formations would be better. So for every couple of units that are stacked together, I believe we're going to get that, that bonus. All right. Uh, and they're going to be worth plus five for each one of those. Now, all of that is nice. Basically, what in will potentially end up happening most of the time is that integrity bonus will be negated by uh, a higher proficiency bonus for the defender uh, for his defensive bonus. I bet you there's an eight under here somewhere. No, oh, there's a six and a seven. No, oh, there's not an eight. Okay, so in this case, it will be even, I think, because these are all sevens as well. All right, <clears throat> so uh, integrity bonus, and then the last. And most one I believe is the most important one, of course, is the armor bonus. And that's going to be this little number here, the uh, three, a superscript, right? That's my attacker armor bonus. And this defensive number here with the zero is my either AT or um, armor bonus. And there's... This guy has a four, right? He's got an eight, four there. So um, but what will happen there is we'll net out those points. And whatever the net difference is, let's say these guys had plus two against all of the AT or armor uh, points here, they would get 10 percentile points per armor point differential. So... Some of the attacks, so, so then we would net all that up, we'd get a, uh, a net percentage difference, and I grab two dice, and I rolled a 69. I would add whatever this added up to, let's say that it would add it up to 20, uh, nine, uh, 20 points, I would get an 89 instead of a 69. <clears throat> So then, now I'm not going to use, I'm going to use this table because this is the correct one from the game. And I'm going to try and, let's just say I was on this four to one table here. And I said I roll 89, right? So I'm going to be on this 92 to 97. Did I say 89? Yeah. So it's not going to be 92 to 97. Where am I? Here. It'll be right here. 84 to 91. And it's going to be a 2-2 two, two result for or against the defender. Now, when I come to the defender, he needs to roll as well. And he rolls a 72, which is not going to be good. As the defender, you want to roll low. I'm going to pull this back so you can see it. Not that it really matters. But in this case, we were on the 4 to 1 column. Yikes. 4 to 1 column here, right there. I'm going to go down to the defender's die roll table. 
and I said I rolled a 70 something, right? Well, it only goes up to 40. So there's going to be no result against the attacker. If I had rolled really low, if I had rolled uh, minus 34 or uh, 24 to 20, I would have inflicted some sort of damage upon the attacker. All right. So there's two tables. Let me just zoom out so you can see. There's two tables, one for the attacker and one for the defender result. So I would get those results and then the, the bracketed number that you saw, there was a two and then a two in parentheses. Uh, the parentheses number is the number of steps that must be lost, they're mandatory losses. And then the rest, the other number on the left of that is a, uh, uh, what do they call it? What's the right word? Not mandatory, it's uh, optional or discretionary is the word they use, uh, discretionary losses. And there's also an asterisk as well on some of the results, which means before you do anything, you've got to take your proficiency check and you've got to roll underneath your proficiency uh, to uh, not have uh, a negative effect. So those discretionary losses is really a whole nother little video rather than going on any longer because, and I also don't have it crisply locked it down in my tiny mind about the exact the exactitude of how those things work and I wanted to make sure I get it right for you. But nevertheless, uh, was that there? I think it was. Take these off. Nevertheless, that's a quick overview of how combat works. It's really pretty straightforward. It's very, uh, well, I think all combat to a certain extent is mechanistic, right? But one of the things that I think is different with this game system than a lot of other game systems, so uh, particularly at this sort of scale, a company and battalion scale, is that it's very fluid as to what you might attack or who, what or who you might attack and when in terms of the, the resolution sequencing and the choices, because you don't necessarily always have to attack. Although if you are under a prepared assault marker, I believe you're going to have to execute some type of attack. Now, um, that's something I would need to check for you, so don't take that as gospel coming from me. In fact, you probably shouldn't take anything I say as gospel. But uh, these are my general impressions after running, I think, four uh, assaults I did and then we did a couple of uh, uh, assaults the uh, prior turn what I should have done was executed that would have been bad probably uh, executed an overrun here I did the exploit movement and moved these guys through to here so anyway that's a quick overview of combat I thought I'd just give you a feel for it it's pretty interesting <clears throat> the the next phase does get a little procedural there's there are very exact steps that you must follow otherwise you get things out of order and it messes things up and it has a lot to do with whether you're going to retreat uh, you're going to uh, you're going to absorb um, these discretionary hits as either a step loss or as a retreat excuse me or as a fatigue factor so uh, all very uh, interesting but it needs a lot of thought before you go and just dive off the, the deep end and start retreating guys and things like that and absorbing losses all right thought i'd share that with you we'll talk soon ciao